from Creamy Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Brickmaker Corobrick has outlined its plans for accessing prime clay at its replay operations, assuring that while it needs to remove coal deposits, it has no intention of becoming a coal producer. Natasha Erdendahl has a story. Corobrick has been operating an open cast clay brick production facility with capacity of up to 88 million bricks a year adjacent to the ecologically sensitive Ridgeplay Nature Reserve in Centurion for decades. After running into coal deposits at its Ridgeplay quarries, the brick manufacturer has a twofold plan. Remove the coal currently situated above prime clay deposits while accessing carbonaceous shale to reduce the use of gas at the operations by up to 20%. Corabrick CEO Nick Booth tells us more about the operations. The Reedflay operation is our second biggest factory after our new factory, Kwastina. So it is a major player in terms of the brick industry in South Africa. Uh, so not just for Cora Brick, but for the building industry. So we, we, we will run at this factory 80 million bricks a year uh, at present. We have the capacity, however, to take that up to as high as 88 million bricks a year. So we're not running quite at full capacity at the moment. And the bulk of the raw materials for the factory are actually mined on site. So we've always located our factories as close to our quarries as we can because they're obviously a cost saving uh, to, the, to the company and to the factory involved. So we keep the cost of the raw materials down. We do bring in some outside raw materials from some of our other quarries, but some 80-90% of the raw materials are actually mined on site. And that's why this quarry is particularly important to this operation. If you look over the quarry, the, what we're looking at is a quarry that's been in operation for some 40 years. And in fact, we've already backfilled some areas of, of the mining that we've done. So the hole behind us is probably now about 10 years old. We've done backfilling to, to the other side of it. And we were aware of the coal. Um, and as we've worked the face to the sort of north uh, northeast, uh, we've obviously run into the coal. And what we have discovered though, that below the coal is also another layer of, of very good brick making clay. So we need to remove the coal to get to the brick making clay. Now, um, to remove coal, you need a different permit, a different licensing, a uh, different mining license to be able to deal with coal. But we're not coal miners, so, and we never have been. So we also had to get some guys involved who understand how to take out the coal and how to market coal and sell coal. So we're not actually in the coal supply business, coal mining business. The quality of the coal is such we couldn't use it in our own processes. So the, the idea really is to remove the coal so we can access the clay and then have the coal removed from site and then and then uh, and no longer is a problem in terms of this quarry the other option obviously is to get to the clay you remove the coal and stockpile the coal on site that has serious environmental risks so the better option is really to move it off site uh, but as i said we're not really coal miners so we need people who understand coal marketing coal supply etc to go and do that so we're not in it for the coal we're actually in it to get to the clay the other advantage is that the clay below the, the coal is carbonaceous. In other words, it's got a bit of uh, organic matter in it, which means it reduces our firing costs at the factory. So it makes the factory even more competitive and also adds to the longevity of the factory. So the factory will last another an extra 10 to 15 years because of the clay that we've discovered below the coal. Corabrick, despite having no intention of becoming a coal miner, is required to obtain a mining license specifically for the coal and apply to the DMRE as early as 2022 to obtain a license to remove it and secure ongoing access to the clay reserves present. This led to concerns about the planned coal removal from the site, with environmental organisation Greenpeace issuing a petition against the granting of a mining application and to stop any assessment and proposals for any coal operations. Greenpeace said that this will threaten the climate, biodiversity and wildlife within the conservation area, which is home to various wildlife such as bird species, rhino, cheetah and buffalo, and provides 15% of Pretoria's water supply, and will have an impact on air and water quality in the region. There's this fallacy that this is, a, that this is going to be a coal mine. If you look at the size of the operation, if you look at the size of the face, uh, it's, if it was a coal mine, it's not an economically viable coal mine. It is actually a clay quarry and the economic value of the, of the, of the clay is what's important to Corabrick. But that being said, the coal obviously has become, in mining parlance, has become an overburden. In other words, it's, become, it, it's actually um, quarantining a layer of, of clay and we need to remove that coal. Um, but it's not, a, it's not a coal mine. It is a clay quarry where we need to remove the coal to access the clay. Booth assures of stringent environmental protection procedures 
with Corabred committed to strict environmental responsibility and compliance with all regulations, including ongoing water and dust monitoring and alien vegetation eradication. He confirms that, over the planned seven-year coal removal period, the coal will be properly removed and disposed, with an experienced contractor appointed to mine the low-quality coal, stockpile it to a limit of 100,000 tonnes, and remove it from the site. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.